Well, hey, everyone. It's a sports algorithm update uh, very early on Tuesday morning, March 26th. We're going to talk about the weekend of college basketball brackets and, and update this uh, standing sheet to see who's winning this tournament that I've been running where I am going to give away 250 bucks to the uh, to the person who sent me that there's only a couple people actually that are in this uh, because I, I didn't receive a lot of entrance. There's like a few of them. There's Brian and uh, Brian and Mark. I believe there's only two people actually sent me their brackets from their tournament. So one of you guys is winning 250 bucks, but we'll talk about really how this works and the standing sheets works. And if you're using a version of this file to run your own office pool, we'll get into how you can kind of analyze this and run some simulations in this video, go over that. So we'll do that. And we'll also talk about the MLB algorithm and uh, how did it do today? I haven't uh, gather the scores. We're going to gather the scores in this video and talk about what this algorithm is doing here. The I think it's the last day of spring training on Tuesday. So we're going to review Monday's games, which I've just set up and we'll look at that. So let's get back to this. And there's another announcement. I'm going to kind of jump the gun here and make this announcement a little bit early. But uh, I had a, a really interesting idea and I want to let everybody in on it that follows these videos. So I'm not gambling. For those of you who track, I have I have a gambling problem. So I've, I've stopped gambling, even though I do all these algorithms. And I was thinking, well, is there any way that we can tie these algorithms and their results to something without having, without potentially losing any money? Like, is there any way I can wager on this without risking any money? And there's a solution to that. There, there's an answer to that question. And so what I'm doing is I'm launching a crypto token, okay? I'm creating a crypto token, which does not cost a lot of money to create. And I'm going to take the money from the sales of these algorithms. You purchase algorithms from me on KenBraverman.com. I'm going to take that money and add it to the liquidity pool of the token. For those of you who don't speak crypto lingo, this is all kind of new to me as well, but I've been researching it recently. You're just basically adding some financial backing to one of these coins, which are tokens, which would basically have no real value anyway. It's just it's just code. It's just it's just a wallet full of tokens that you create. You can create them for almost nothing. But I'm going to add liquidity and real money. I'm going to put real money into crypto put the liquidity into the token. And then I'm also going to give tokens away to people that purchase algorithms. So while I'm going to own a huge chunk of them, I'm also going to give some away whenever you purchase an algorithm. So what you're going to get from me is not only an algorithm, but you're also going to get some of these coins and I'm not going to, tokens, I should say, they're tokens, not coins. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the name is yet. And I'm not going to release any information yet. I want to give it only to people who purchase and, and subscribe to these algorithms. Uh, and then when, when I actually launch it, I'll let everybody know ahead of time when I launch it and what the liquidity pool is going to be. And that will be a very interesting time because once you launch this cryptocurrency, while it really shouldn't have any value and it's kind of all just, it's all just junk code basically, but people are buying and selling these on real markets. And this is the space where, where fortunes are being made right now in the crypto industry. So I figured let's create a token. And on top of that, all the tokens that I own or the, the huge percentage of the tokens that I own, I'm going to tie them back to the results of the algorithms. Meaning every day I'm going to make a post and I'm going to say something like, the algorithm predicts that Connecticut is going to beat San Diego State in round three, the sweet 16 of the college basketball, men's college basketball bracket. If Connecticut wins, I'm going to sell some of my tokens. If Connecticut loses, I'm going to burn some of my tokens, which means it's going to take them out of circulation and no one's going to buy them. It's going to reduce the number of available tokens that exist, which will have the generalized impact of increasing the value of the remaining tokens that you own. Because if you own a billion, if there's a billion tokens, let's say, and every day I will wager, wager in quotation marks basically, wager a million tokens 
on one of these teams from the algorithm in baseball today, it would have been the number one pick, which would have been Philadelphia over Tampa Bay. I don't know if they won. We're going to find out in a minute. But it, if Philadelphia wins, I sell some tokens. because It's a win for me. So I get to sell some tokens on the open market. And if Philadelphia loses, I burn them, which means it's like a loss for me because I owned them. But it's a gain for you if you own other if you own tokens of the cryptocurrency that I've created. So lots of crazy stuff to talk about. There will be more on this to come, uh, but I've really spent a lot of time recently looking into this because I, I just couldn't believe the money that people are making. And basically we'll have the first cryptocurrency that's tangentially tied to sports betting and the algorithms, which will absolutely be a first. I'm sure no one has done that before. So I'm excited to see how that works. That kind of gives me something else to do. And also, of course, still gives me something to do with the algorithms. So that being said, that was my riff on the cryptocurrency, which is not named yet. Um, anyway, how did this tournament go this weekend, March Madness? Well, uh, I watched a few of these games. Unfortunately, James Madison absolutely got rolled over by Duke. Um, that's what happened. At least I didn't bet. I mean, I would have bet. I would have bet on James Madison. And I would have lost. Um, I would have burnt some tokens on James Madison. That's for sure. They uh, they lost. Duke really played well. So that's one where I, I was just wrong. But oh, I thought that game was going to go. We've got things that are not very surprising. Connecticut winning. San Diego State winning. Illinois winning. Iowa State winning. So these brackets, with the exception of people probably would have had Auburn instead of San Diego State, but all the other seeds were exactly correct in the, in the, um, there is that the Midwest, at the top left, the East, sorry, the East at the top left. The West, you've got North Carolina, Alabama. Here, people would have expected Baylor to beat Clemson. That was kind of a close game, but Clemson really hold them off. Baylor came back at the end to make it close and then, then did not make it close in the last 30 seconds. So Clemson was there and Arizona. So three out of the four here, also the best seeds win and only slight upset is going to be Clemson over Baylor. Slight, still very, very close. In the South, you've got Houston that almost blew a game, but managed winning Duke. Yeah. NC State. That is uh that that's abnormal because they were an 11 seed and Marquette. So three out of four here as well are the favorites. And it's really only NC State that comes in as an underdog in that quadrant. And in the Midwest, it's Purdue, Gonzaga, and Kansas here. I mean, that, that's a real close seed. And also Kansas had a major player injured. So I won't even call that an upset. Uh, I think a lot of people probably had Gonzaga there. Creighton and Tennessee. So this is also very reliable. It's amazing. There are no um, there are no exact brackets, I believe. Or maybe the, I think there was two that existed on one of the platforms. As you can see, this is actually not that awful, except there were some updates in round or some upsets in round one that people did not have for sure, like Grand Canyon beating St. Mary's and uh what else was a big upset over here? There was, Oregon was an upset. And Colorado was an upset. Oakland was the huge upset over Kentucky. NC State's an upset. James Madison is an upset, but not really, if you've been paying attention to them. So I don't, I don't know if there are any perfect brackets left. It's tough to get a perfect bracket, which is why it's never happened. So how do the standings look? Well, I refreshed the standings and we have, I guess, 45 entrants. Yeah, we have 45 entrants. And right now, Wes is winning this thing. He's up by two points and he also has the most number of total points possible. Dawn is a close second. Then you've got some other people here, Justin, Kate, Carrie, Greg, Jordan. Notice that the available points, the total points remaining really favor people like Jordan and Greg over Carrie and Justin. But what I wanted to do is say, all right, if you're watching this and you're trying to say, well, where's the difference, you know, between Wes and Don's entries or Wes, Don, Greg, and Jordan. Let's try that. Let's try Wes. Let's look at just them and I'll show you one of the other pivot tables and how you can compare this. So let's go with 
There's West on Greg and Jordan West. Don, whoops, hold down control when you do this. If you're not going to use this thing up here. West on Jordan and Greg, right? Greg. So these four people that all have a good amount of points and have a lot of points possible remaining. Okay. So they're in good shape. Well, here are their, here's all the teams over here and who has what. And this is kind of interesting to look at because what you start to see is, well, where are their disparities between these teams? Like Jordan and Don both have Arizona going all the way. So the Arizona games don't matter much except for Wes and Greg. Wes is really rooting against Arizona because he's only got them in the next round. Um, other big ones, Connecticut. Wes and Greg both have Connecticut going all the way to the end, right? Um, yeah, they basically they have Connecticut. So they're, they're really rooting for Connecticut and hoping Arizona loses. And of course, Jordan and Don are hoping Arizona wins and Connecticut loses. Uh, other ones that are deep here, Jordan has Gonzaga going all the way to this round. So Jordan is heavily rooting for Gonzaga to win. Gonzaga. Uh, Don is rooting for Marquette to win. Wes is rooting for Purdue to, to go pretty deep. And Greg is rooting for Tennessee to go pretty deep. So it's just a way of looking at, at you know, quickly kind of comparing everybody's uh, teams and who they want to have win. It's just a really cool way of looking at it. It's really quick rather than having to look at everybody's single bracket. So that is the update right now. Wes, you're in the lead. Good job. So that's that's your college basketball update. We'll do another one this weekend. Now let's talk about baseball because uh, the baseball season is coming. I did sell an algorithm today. Thank you, Muhammad, for purchasing one. And uh, I expect to sell certainly a few more here. If you want to purchase a copy of this, you get emails from me every day from now until April 15th. However, I did not send an email today because I didn't get this done today. I ran into other issues and could not get this done today. Uh, but I will send one. Uh, I say today, I mean Monday. I wasn't able to send one for Monday the 25th, but I will send one for Tuesday. But let's look at the results for Monday because I just prepared it. And we're going to talk about what all these things mean and, and looking at the results today. So Tampa Bay and Philadelphia, it looks like Tampa Bay won this game. So I would have burnt a million of my uh, cryptocurrency tokens today because I would have put the, the million on Philadelphia and they lost. They lost 6-3. Now they had some pitchers who hadn't pitched in years. Jacob Wagesbach hadn't pitched since 2011 and David Buchanan hadn't pitched since 2016. 2016 it's the last time you had available stats so that's crazy it's just why it's important to look at everything in this string of information that they, they actually really can't be a number one pick with a pitcher that hadn't pitched since 2016 that that's just an important piece of information to know mets and yankees looks like the yankees won three nothing minnesota and the brewers uh no the braves minnesota and the braves the braves won four nothing Toronto and Pittsburgh, obviously, yeah, okay, three to four, Pittsburgh, boy, we're having a rough day today, St. Louis and the Cubs, another loss, <laughs> spring training for you, the Rockies, here's a win, Brewers win 10 to one, and also put up a lot of points, as you can see, Dakota Hudson's ERA, and, uh, and also the lineup factor for Colorado was really light there. Boston and Texas. Boston wins nine to two. Angels and Dodgers. Angels win six nothing. Mariners and Padres. Mariners and Padres was four to one. Mariners. Guardians lose six nothing to Arizona. And the Giants beat the A's four to one. All right, so let's take a look at the day pivot and see what the total is for the day. It's a six and five day by win strength. 
And what you see is, you know, you lose that game with Philadelphia. Milwaukee wins. Also like to look at what the runs projected were and the actual total runs scored by the team to see how close we are and to see if games with lower projected runs have fewer projected runs. It's a good way to look at, at how this is doing. So this is that combo number 107. Now, um, there will be other combinations that probably did better. You'd have to run the macro, which takes 10 minutes, and I'm not going to do it in this video. But going with number 107, I actually want to look at something for a second. Let's go to the combo numbers. Combo number 107 is right here. How about combo number 299? How did that one do? Because that was the one that basically did the best on Sunday. Combo number 299, refresh. Five and six are not even really better. Not, not that great. All right, so uh, what I wanted to mention about this, your projected score is sometimes going to differ from your margin. There, th that means that the margin is the one you want to trust, and that's the one we go by. The team with the positive margin is the one that's supposed to win. The projected score is, is using slightly different information for the formula, so it's generally not as reliable as the margin because the margin is using all of these different stats here, and the projected score is only using a few of them, trying to get the score as close as it can. So that's why we look at win-loss. You want to look at which team has the highest margin. And in, in this distribution, it was actually Milwaukee over Colorado that's the number one pick, and they did put up a ton of runs. And yeah, this was a better combination string. But I'll do more videos on baseball as we go here and running the macro and seeing what our best distributions are because we're going to have a whole set of new stats coming in and there's a lot to do here. So that's basically the update and there will be benefits to purchasing algorithms from me and they will be in the cryptocurrency token realm. And that's some crazy stuff that can happen there. Like I, I've seen videos and I understand what's going on there where you list this token and you start with a market value, a liquidity of like a thousand bucks. And by the end of the day, the thing's worth like a million dollars in liquidity. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, what? What is going on? And it's just, it just, you just all of a sudden you start adding your token to a market of people that are trading back and forth. And they're all trying to, they're trying to take advantage of the situation and, and, you know, pump up a token and then sell it. So it's certainly not a stable investment at all, but it's a, in, in an odd way, it's a weird way to make an abnormal amount of money or lose an abnormal amount of money that you probably just made. That's the thing is I would not recommend dumping a ton of money into cryptocurrency. I would re recommend dumping a small amount of money into cryptocurrency on some tokens that might get some traction because the multiple that you might make on that is just distorted and abnormal. And so I will be doing this because uh, it seems like the it seems like the best space to experiment in right now. And I'll be the only one who's tying sports betting to the liquidity pool and to the available number of tokens. I'm, I'm going to be the only one that's doing that. Like nobody else is going to be doing that. There's, there's no way. So, cause we've got the algorithms and just the idea is unique. So it'll be a unique thing and you'll get in on it early before I even launch the token. I'm going to take down everyone's information who wants in on this. And I will send you all the tokens as soon as I mint all of them. And we can watch and see what happens. I expect there to be crazy things that happen, like right off the bat. So that will be fun. And it's a new thing to do. And it's a new set of videos to do. So you'll start seeing videos about setting up uh, crypto tokens and the process involved with that. And then I'll, yeah, every day, every day I'll launch and I will wager, wager in quotation marks, I will put up for potential burning an amount of tokens, a large amount of tokens, probably like 1% of, of my availability I'll put up uh, to be burned if the pick loses. And that means everybody else is going to win <laughs> when the pick loses. That's what you want because I lose a lot, even though the algorithms don't lose as much though. So the algorithms will probably win a whole lot more.
And that's what we'll go by is we'll go by the the number one pick in, in each sport that I'm running of the algorithms for the day. So lots of crazy stuff happening. Keep an eye out. Should be fun. May all your picks be winning. I hope you're enjoying your brackets. And if you're interested in baseball, get in on the MLB algorithm, which is of course the best that's ever been made. And it takes into a lot of, it takes into account a lot of stats and generally works pretty well. So good luck, everybody. May all your picks be winning and may all your tokens be multiplying because um, or just going up in value, I guess, as we enter the crypto space and the algorithms become, I don't know, they're jumping into the 21st century, or I should say the the 2020s, because that's really what, the, this is the decade of crypto, in my opinion. It's a decade of AI and crypto. And so you got to get in on it while you can and while the market is ripe for it. All right, good luck. Good luck.